Damn, that's a nice looking vacuum pump. That's really nice. A little vacuum gauge on it. Solenoid valve. It's a general electric vacuum pump motor. Uh, one quarter horsepower. Got a fan and everything on it. The time delay. The triac or something. Transistor. That's really neat. That's really, really neat. <laughs> I don't think I need it to run this, it's just for the back, the LiFo plate exposure chamber. It's heavy. It's got an intake and exhaust filter. Look like little jam jars. It's really nice. Alright, we've got some power up. It's test run time. Power's on. There we go. It's on the highest, it's only about 24 inches of mercury. There's a leak somewhere. It's a bit tired, but I think it'll work again. That fan wasn't doing anything either. I think that might be thermostatically controlled though. It's set to 100, 110, probably Fahrenheit. The motor's still cold, so once that clicks in, that fan should come on. Cool. It works. Now to test this monster out. 25 amps on single phase, it's going to be a push. Now that is one serious power supply for one lamp. <laughs> it's got four ballast transformers, four capacitors, there are, I think there are 10 microfarad, 1000 volt, 60 hertz cap. And a cooling blower in there, I'm guessing that is actually a blower from one of these, the one that's melted, and that's its, old, its replacement, which is very well used. Um, looks like there's two starting solenoids there. Something like that. Yeah, it must be a solenoid. There's a little contactor in there made by Cutler Hammer. Control transformer. Control PCB with another control transformer on it. Very basic stuff. There's no... I oh, there's a few ICs in there. That's for the integrator unit though. That plugs into the uh, lighting unit. I can set it to manual and make it run anyway. And you've got main power input, which is, yeah, very high amperage. That's pretty cool. Yeah, damn wire nuts, though. That one there's a bit shabby. Oh, it's just sitting on an unused wire. That's a 220 volt input. We use 240 volts, so that's why they've been terminated and left loose. Very cool. I suppose I better clean it first before I take it inside. <laughs> Don't overspin centrifugal blowers with compressed air, it's an easy way to destroy them. That's a lot better. Oh yeah, I did check these caps for charge before I uh, started playing with it. Even though it's been, I know it's been disconnected for a few years, it's just, you got to be sure. 
Who knows, they might have plugged it in just before they got rid of it. Bearings in that motor sound a bit sad. It's probably going to suffer the same fate as the burnt one over there. Damn, it's starting to rain again. Get the lid back on. These were sitting out overnight in the rain too, so I've got to check everything for water. Well, that power supply's a lot heavier than it looks. A lot heavier. I can't believe I lifted that. Well, it was already on the trailer, so I didn't have to bend my back. If it was sitting on the ground, I wouldn't be able to lift it. That's where back injury comes into the equation. Like a big air conditioner. It'd be like trying to lift the Hitachi air conditioner. This thing here is only light. It's everything, all the cases are aluminium. This cover, the frame, everything's aluminium. But despite the attempt to keep the weight down, this thing is still ungodly heavy. So I've cleaned the glass. It has a nice texture to it as well. So it's probably lead glass or something like that. Maybe quartz crystal glass, I don't know. But this is made to be hung from the ceiling over the exposure area. Uh, the vacuum pump doesn't come into this side of it. That's more to do with the uh, exposure chamber, a vacuum chamber. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to put some power onto this thing and see what happens. I've still got to open that up and check it out though, make sure there's no water in the electrics. That was the, probably the worst hit because it was standing on its end and water would have just gone straight into the side of it. So, yeah. This one looks alright. It was sitting as it was on a pallet, so water's probably splashed up in here, but because it's been sitting in the sun for a while, it's nice and dry. But, yeah. That's one hell of a lamp system. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I know I'll be wear wearing a welding visor when I turn it on. It's dangerously bright. It's got warnings all over it about UV exposure. Okay, I'm just taking the covers off and I found a new sticker on this one. The first one was it was installed in 88. But it says that OLEC installed a new bulb in this thing in the th on the 3rd of the 5th, 2006. So it's got a fairly new bulb in it. Hopefully it's still alright. Now that's the main thing. If the bulb's buggered, then there's no point in really running this thing. But I'm pretty sure it'd be alright. They're a fairly tough bulb. And this thing's been in storage for a while too. It was just deemed obsolete because they found a much better system. But... Yeah, we'll give it a try anyway. At least power the power supply up and see what we can do with it, because that's got to have some grunt. Okay, well this is the heart of the beast. We've got two cooling blowers for this one big bulb. Uh, there's another geared down shaded pole motor to operate the shutter. It does turn with the brakes disengaged, but it's not really made to. That's so closed and it's got a little brake thing that clicks in and out. We'll push that. Exposes the lamp. The glo globe itself has a bit of a bulge in it. Two bulges. Let's see it's bulged out here and here. I don't know how good it is, I've just wiped it down with acetone. So it should be nice and clean. But yeah, there's not a lot to it. There's no uh, data input ports or anything on it. I thought there were ports down here, but it's just a blank plate. It doesn't do anything. But it's good, it's clean, ready to go. My neighbour's doing some blowing or something, so it's getting noisy. And yeah, that's the housing with the other bit of shield, reflector. But it's got calibration screws and a plug on that, but they're not really connected to anything. It's just an empty box. So I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> There's nothing in there. So that's a waste of time. Just this thing must obviously run manually off a push button or a pedal or something. Yeah. I'll give this part a clean up, chuck it back together again and we'll apply some power see what really happens. Okay, well the system is working, but it's just a bit out of sync, I think. Just cut itself out, but it will illuminate the light when the fans are off and the shutter's closed. And then when I open the shutter, it turns the lamp off. 
and turns the fan on. So something's switched around inside this thing. But we can turn that off. Now it should be lighting up. Manual's still on. It's only on 1000 watt intensity. I haven't cranked up to 5000 yet. But it's starting to light up in the back. You can see down the uh, air grill or the air vent. And then as soon as we start to expose, it turns itself off. So something swapped around inside this unit. Probably not too hard to fix, but I'll uh, have a bit of a look at it and see if I can fix that problem. Yeah, now it's just doing funny games. Now the fan's running, but the light's not coming on. So, yeah, something's messed up, but it does work. Judging by the bulges in the globe, I'd say it's run without the fans on for quite a while, and they've realised something's wrong, so... It's probably inside this control board, which controls the contactors and relays and other shit, so... Yeah, there is something wrong with it, but it's not too hard to fix. This should do for now. I don't have time to mess around with it anymore tonight, but it'll be a fun little project. Thanks for watching.